Now let's understand how authorized filter works. So if I add a new project, again MVC4 application, let's name this as test security because we are going to do authentication and authorization now with respect to MVC application. Let me add this project, again empty project with ASPX view and a very simple controller. Let's name this as home controller, wherein inside the index method, I'll simply add a view, which is maybe ASPX view with the default content written as welcome to index. Now normally when anybody gives a call to this home slash index, everybody is offered with output. But then imagine a situation that we want to restrict the call to be given to index page and we want unless until user authenticates himself, we do not want to allow any call to this index method itself. So in such cases, we have an attribute which is called as authorized attribute. That we can specify. Now if I go to definition of authorized attribute, you may find out it's ultimately a simple filter attribute only. And if you expand this, you may find that this attribute is also allowed on top of class, which means if at all you want to specify on the method, like which method should be allowed and which method should be denied for the, you can see calls. So you may specify whichever methods you want secure, you may go for making it uh, 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 decorated with authorized uh, attribute. If you want entire uh, controller class itself to be decorated, that's also fine. So what will happen if I put authorized attribute now on my, I can say a method. So if I run the code again, now still, yeah, right now we have, you can say maybe error which says unauthorized. So we are not we are not, uh, you can say, authorized to view this web page at all. And we re really require a permission. In this case, can we somehow give a login page to the end user? What will happen if at all I go to IE as a browser? What kind of exception IE may throw? Again, run the code. And on IE again, same error we have got, that is permission is denied. So in order to get the uh, permission, by default, it's a Windows authentication. So we ourselves will have to specify first here, that is in the web config file, that please allow a call to this web page using form authentication only. So what I'm going to do now is, I'm going to, uh, because of this uh, zigzag line, I'm going to just change the framework mode. So quickly, I'm going to change the mode to framework 4.5. I'm coding in 4.6 right now. So maybe I should change the framework version. And now I'll open web config file one more time. Now that zigzag line is gone because that was a, there were extra attributes available in 4.6. And uh, unfortunately, the IntelliSense goes uh, blank specifically for 4.6 web config in MVC. So after this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an attribute called as authentication. As you may see, we don't have default attribute anywhere, but the default value you always know that like in ASP.NET, we by default have mode, which is windows here. So I would specify authentication and a mode will be now forms. Now the time you put mode equal to forms and if you run the program one more time here, yeah, now this gives you a different error altogether. Now the error is not you are authorized. You are not authorized. Now the error is resource cannot be found. And the resource it is looking for is login.aspx. So, but as you know, user never gives a request to a page itself, right? So in that case, can we specify by ourselves for login purpose, which particular page MVC should look for? So to do that job, we'll specify forms and inside forms you will have done this before in maybe asp.net we may have to specify now login url 
and login URL in this case is not a ASPX page. Default is always login.aspx. But I want to change it now. I want to go to maybe a different controller altogether. That can be maybe simple login controller. So we haven't discussed this part yet. We have been dealing with single controllers all the time. So let me add one more controller into the project. Let's name this controller as login controller, which is empty controller again. And then in this empty controller, we'll have index method. But then let's change the method name as well. Let's name this as login slash login. And we want to return a view. Which one is that? We'll see. So I want to go to login slash login. So login as in controller name and login as in a method name that we have here. This name will be automatically suffixed by controller as a word. Now, as you can see, in the login controller login method, I'm going to return a view. Which view? Now the view which basically has got two text boxes, one for username and one for password. And then once we have username and password text box available, user can submit that username and password back to the server side. Submission will happen obviously to login slash some other method. So can we take the same method again? We can. And I need not tell you now because we have used it many number of times. I'll put, put HTTP post. But then what kind of a data to expect over here? To have that uh, uh, data, username, password, whether uh, create a persistent cookie or not, to store that data, we may construct a model altogether to hold that username and password via data. So what we'll do is I'll go to models. I'll add a class here. Let's name the class as, let's say, user or h user over here. And then, so now let's add couple of properties, one to hold username and one more to hold password. And then we'll create a login view, which is with the text boxes specifically for entering username and for entering password. So in order to get the model in scaffolding, I have to build the project. Maybe I would expect a parameter of type h user for which I may have to refer the model namespace user user compile the code again and now let's create a UI for login view. Let's say right click add a view for this method. The view name by default will be login. We can keep it as it is and we want strongly typed view to h user. To have this h user, we should have compiled application and that's what we already have done. What's the, you can say purpose. So though the purpose is uh, taking the values from the user, input values, I would say create because that way we will have those text boxes available specifically in the UI for h user. Let me add this, you can say user now, this, this UI. We have everything, only a small change. Instead of password or editor for password, I would prefer to have password for password, which means the field will be password field, wherein user can enter the data. So we will not be able to see the data, what user types. And instead of having this button called as create, let's have this button called as login. And some parts which we can remove from the scaffolding template, that is go to the list. We have a title called as login as it is, which looks great. And let's say user over here. So on submission, initially we'll have an empty view. On login, we will have user data. And then here, returning a view, instead of that, we would like to validate user to, uh, uh, to data against database. If user is valid, then we would like to redirect user from this login view or login method to whichever method that user actually uh, uh, suggested to go to or asked to go to. Now, before I even proceed, let me put a breakpoint here. Let me put a breakpoint here. Let me go back to our controller called as home index here. And then I have already put up an attribute called as authorize. As you have noticed, without authorize, the call was anyway directly allowed. With authorize, it actually routes to login slash login because I specified 
authentication mode is form and as specified the login to uri is login slash login which means controller slash action method called as login let's see what happens now as you know by default column is always given to home slash index which is configured under app start root config file let's run now and see what happens i am giving call to home slash index it comes to login page and gives you the login ui you enter anything as a text let's enter maybe let's say uh, test user and suppose test as a password if i say login and now inside the h user you, you may see we have got test data as well but then before i even continue notice what is the uri now if you notice the uri is login slash login and written url which means there is a by default query string formed and because we redirected user to the login page so return url form to some page right now now why I can't see a page, there's a reason. I did not call for a page. It was a, you can say it was a default URI, localhost colon 64664. Actually it was giving call to home slash index only. Now I'll again run the program. And instead of I giving call to login slash login, let me put it up as slash home slash index by myself. If I say enter now, return the empty view, have a look at the URI again. Now the full URI you can see return URL is equal to home slash index, which means we have a knowledge about which URI user requested earlier. So that parameter is there in the query string called as return URL. So now thing to do here, if you have, if you uh, notice, we earlier uh, during first demonstration or so, we discussed about how do we collect the query string parameters into the code and to collect that parameter we can always have an option something like string and return url remember the discussion we did on integer id versus integer number in case of one of the action method wherein id was a parameter by default taken but number we ended up in error and then we had to pass on that number as a query string in the first place so now we have written url let's run one more time run it let's try uh, i did not specify any uh, specific uri so it's by default uh, you can say root i may specify test here i may specify test here and click again and now we have a written url which is root itself by default and then we have user details like test and test so we have all the details regarding which url user has asked for and why Maybe let's say we are in login page because user is not authorized or authenticated yet. So our job in this method where the breakpoint hits right now is to authenticate the user against database, authorize him. If authenticated and authorized, then we will redirect him to the respective page. Now, as I said earlier as well, we can very well go and put up a database, but we will have a simulation here. So instead of coding against database, I will try to do validation which is simple hard coded user if user and password equals so and so then i will allow that user you may authorize you may authenticate based on the database values completely customized code you may build and to simulate that i'm going to create a method here which will check username id password validate or authorize user and then redirect user to a respective page so to do that job what i'm going to do is i'm going to specify here I'm going to create, I'm going to validate user. So let's have one method here. This can be a simple business logic method. Let's say public returning boolean is valid. And which can expect a parameter, which can be simple. Maybe I'll have private method is valid. This is going to take h user, user. And then I'm going to return from here, return if user dot username equal equals let's say test and user dot password equal equals test yeah. if username and password equal equals test then we'll return true else we'll return false from here and then this is the method over here do the db work here 
So that you can replace very well. If username and password is valid, then I'm going to go and return to the user, return to the uh, respective method that is written URL. And if you note one more thing, like only redirection is not the concern because if at all I redirect user to home controller slash index method again, what will happen is the, you can say MV, uh, MVC controller on server side or MVC engine on server side will anyway check that is user again authenticated. Why will it check for again authentication? Because you have, uh, you can say not set the cookie yet. You have not set the session object yet. As in normally ASP.NET web forms, after authentication is done, you normally set up an authentication session and you set an authentication cookie, right? So that's what we have to do. So we will check first if is valid. So who's valid? User is valid. If this returns me true, then I am going to go and set an authentication cookie by myself. And how do we do that? We will have to simply go for forms authentication. This is the same class which is used in ASP.NET web forms. System.web.security I have imported now. Dot set authentication cookie for which user? So for the user with this, this username. And then would you like to create a persistent cookie or not? Now this data obviously can be collected from the form field itself. I did not pick the checkbox. I did not put the checkbox uh, specifically for uh, login page. Otherwise, uh, one can do uh, add uh, into H user one more property which is of type boolean that is remember me or not. So as of now, I will specify false here. But then this value can be collected. This is the value wherein we want to specify whether to create persistent cookie on the client machine along with ID or not. I'll say false right now. So set authentication cookie and then let us return and redirect user to some other page and which one we want to go to. I would like to go to return URL now from here. Then I'll go to uh, else case. Don't forget to return the same view called as login. But then user may not want to go and type his username again and again. So we may specify now user again which means whatsoever user we have fetched, same user I will pass on to the view, which view is that? Whatever is the login view that we have, default view. So, so that user can have his username at least entered in the text box as it is. So this is very simple to uh, do the job. Set the authentication cookie and redirect user to the respective page itself. How about on the page, which is welcome page now, after we enter into index page, in a view, suppose if I want to go and convey welcome to so and so user, how do I convey that? Again, we'll have view data in the index method. And then we'll specify view data of suppose view name. Can we get the current user's name itself? We can. We can get here with the help of user dot identity dot name. This is the same parameter that we used in ASP.NET normal web forms and then inside the view called as index view under home what I'm going to do is I'm going to specify welcome to index page and a person's name I'm going to go and enter over here as view data of view name. Now let's run this step by step and see whether it works or not. So I'll put a breakpoint here as well and let's run it now F5 and then I'm going to give a call by myself to slash index slash here. Let's enter now slash home slash index. Let's enter now test and test. Click on login. Here we are. So we have got you can see test test as a user. I have got written URL which is home slash index now. Let's try. This is a valid user now. We'll set the authentication cookie for test user and redirect user to home slash index. Here we come to that page now. Now we enter into index method. We'll set up a view data and we'll show that view back to the end user also. It's that simple. So after this, we may want to do the logout as well. So for the logout purpose, let's go to index ASPX and have a very very simple button which is normal ahref 
and we'll specify here a method which is or name called as logout. But to do the logout, let's assemble everything regarding login logout into login controller itself. So we may specify now login slash logout, which means go to a controller called as login and go to a controller, go to an action method called as logout now. So inside the login controller, I may like to have a method which is going to go and return now action the result again, which is simple logout method. And what this method is going to go and do now? This method is simply going to uh, disable or you can say clean the authentication cookie. So I'm going to specify again forms authentication dot sign out. And I'm going to redirect user by myself to the URL, which is slash home, sorry, slash, maybe we, uh, we can go to slash home slash index. Reason behind that, if I say redirect, redirect to home slash index, what will happen is uh, user will anyway navigate to login page itself. Because since you are going to go and destroy the cookie, destroy the session, visiting index page will take user to login page one more time. Reason behind that is very simple because index page demands authentication cookie and a session on a server side. See what happens now. So I'm going to run the project using control F5. Here we are. Let me hit a, a give a call now. That is to test and test. Login. We come to index page first and we have a logout button. So on click of logout, we will again come back to login. But look at the URI. I asked for home slash index. So I said redirect home slash index, but then it comes to login page because home slash index demands authentication authorization and we already have destroyed the session by saying sign out from forms authentication. So it's very simple to do login logout with the help of one simple attribute called as authorize. Though we ourselves have to do this setup cookie, set up a session, destroy the session, but then authorize is very important because then the call will not be allowed to the index method unless until user proves himself. What will happen if at all I have another method available here? Suppose like public action result again and let's create a method which is called as about also. So normally about the website it should be allowed to everybody. So if I say return a view right now and in the about page maybe in uh, add view if I say about view add a view and here I will specify something like h1 and this is about security and now again I will run the code so what happens is default call is given to slash login slash slash in home slash index but I would like to call to slash home slash about and you will find out without even checking for authentication, the call is offered to you or reply is offered to you because about does not have that attribute called as authorize. However, if you try to change about to index and say enter, you'll be redirected to a login page, which means instead of about, if we have here register as a page, then that can be one option wherein we can have register page, we can take all the data of the user, we can push it into a database and then we can set up authentication cookie and redirect user to the respective page like maybe index page also. So this is what authorized attribute is going to go and help us in. If you wish to see the definition for authorized, as I said earlier, we have got certain, you can say uh, uh, parameters. What if on authorization you want to do something else? So you can very well go and inherit from authorized attribute and you can very well do any custom job on authorization itself. So keep it in mind, unlike ASP.NET, I did not even specify authorize tag into web config file. This web config file. I only specified authentication and I did authorization by myself. So what if, if you want to go and let's say allow somebody, deny somebody, maybe allow user in specific role also, that job you can do in your custom code itself somewhere in a login controller. So hopefully this is clear. So I'm, now we are going to go and move to something called as partial views. 